The state of New York recently ruled against the former president of the United States, Donald Trump, stating that he needed to pay around $350 million in fines in a real estate deal. The state of New York is extremely corrupt and is no longer a place to do business. In this pop-up episode, we're going to take a look at what happened, what you should know, and why my company is no longer doing business in New York. All that and more. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Create Your Own Life Show. I am your host, Jeremy Ryan Slate, the CEO and co-founder of Command Your Brand. We help our clients to combat cancel culture by placing them on the right podcasts and new media. You can check us out over at bestpodcastbook.com where you can grab our number one ranked PR book. That is bestpodcastbook.com. Reminder, if you're brand new to this channel, like this video, leave us a comment and smash that subscribe button if you support liberty, freedom, and want to build a better future. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at the recent Trump ruling in New York City because I think a lot of people are um, really portraying incorrectly what happened out there to, to make themselves feel a little bit more right and make Trump look like a criminal. But I also want to give you a bit of information on why my company, Command Your Brand, is no longer um, employing in the state of New York, frankly. Um, so I'll get to that in just a few minutes. And uh, I will say, um, the Trump ruling only solidifies that decision. We made that decision uh, towards the end of 2023. So I don't want to say like, hey, this happened to Trump and now I'm doing that because I want to give you guys the truth of what occurred. Um, but it solidifies the decision we made in, in 2023. So for those of you that may not be aware, if you're living in a rock, under a rock out there somewhere, the president was charged in a fraud case in New York City. It was a real estate fraud case. And he has to pay um, over $350 million in fines. Um, he can't do business in the state of New York for the next two years or hold a board seat. A similar um, two-year probation period was both for Eric Trump and Donald, Donald Jr., um, but their fines are much smaller. I think it was in the 2 to $4 million range per them. Now, let's explain what happened here. So basically... The idea is they're saying that Trump falsely inflated the value of his real estate holdings and then used those falsely inflated values to get loans. So for those of you that maybe you didn't buy a house or you're not having a real estate holding out there, the way things work is you give your own value of what you think something is worth. For example, um, the home we're currently in, the market was a little out of control. so. We basically said, hey, you know, this is the offer we want to put down. And then an appraiser comes in, takes a look at your home, takes a look at properties in the area and says, well, based on the value of this home and based on the properties around you, this is what we can actually appraise it for. And our appraisal came in pretty close to our offer. So we were in good shape there. And it's slightly different in how it works in corporate real estate, but the concept is pr pretty much the same. So you, uh, Trump has all these different properties. He's going to build a new property. He goes to the bank to get a loan. And he says, you know, basically, I want to build this property. I need this much. And I have these properties that are worth this much. So he says the value he needs. Appraiser comes out, looks at the different places, says, yes, this is the proper value. They issue the loan. Trump pays the loan back. So no one's even owed money now at this point in time. And what they're saying is that he falsely inflated his properties to get loans. Any of you out there that have ever taken out a mortgage or a real estate loan or anything like that, totally understand. The bank just doesn't say, I trust you, buddy. I got this. Um, I totally believe you what you're telling me your property is worth. That's just not how it works. These are large financial transactions and a bank always wants to protect themselves or a lender always wants to protect themselves. So that lender will appraise whatever collateral you're putting up. In this case, it's Trump properties. He was looking at Trump Tower, Mar-a-Lago, these different places, and they're appraising them based on, you know, like they'll they'll come at some sort of a, um, like a compromise number. Like this is the value that the person put up. This is the value we found. It's always gonna lean more in the bank's favor than your favor. So to just say that Trump said this is what it was worth and they let money based on that is a total lie and a total fabrication. That's just not how the system works. Anyway, so that's what happened. There'll be an appeals process, meaning Trump will get to say, um, 
he will get to have an appeal. Now, New York State's trying to force it, and they're trying to get him to pay a percentage of the fine, which is around 10%, so that's around $35 million he would have to pay um, while the appeals process is going on. But even Letitia James has said, you know, we're willing to repossess his properties. So the, the type of route they could take here, um, which I really don't hope they take, and, and I'll tell you guys in just a second why my company is no longer employing in the state of New York, but lost my train of thought. Okay, cool. So <laughs> uh, Letitia James had said that they would basically be willing to, to repossess his properties if he can't come up with the final amount. So what New York could do is they could say, well, we found the, the property values to only be worth X, Y, and Z. And, you know, Donald Trump, you still owe us $300 million. So they could take all his properties on these way underestimated rates for loans that were already paid off. Like the banks were happy. The banks testified in Trump's favor. They said, hey, he's a good lender. We do business with him. We make money off these things. This is great. So they could basically take his properties and say his properties weren't worth enough and then still demand a fine. Like this could get really crazy in this for a lot of people saying this doesn't feel like, especially in real estate, a market you want to be involved in. So now my story, uh, my company has been in business since 2016 and we're a small PR agency. We employ people that, um, are, you know, virtual. So we're in, I think 13 States or something like that is where we employ right now. We have, uh, 17 employees, so we're not huge, but we're a good, good size company and, uh, service in anywhere from, from, 30 to 60 clients in a, in a given year, uh, putting them on podcasts. And the way, um, so as a, when you're employing as a business in different states, you, you get registered in your home state. You also have to register in all the different states that you're paying in because you have to pay um, unemployment tax. You have to pay um, disability taxes. There's always different taxes you have to pay that are different in each state you're in. And we also have our workers' compensation insurance that we have to carry, um, which is wild to me because I'm sure like if somebody like all of our people work virtually, I'm sure if somebody hurt themselves in their keyboard, an insurance company would find a way to not pay for it. But anyway, um, so the way it works then is you can get a policy that's just for one state or you can carry a policy that covers multiple states. So the policy that we're in, we thought covered us in, I believe, about 20 states. And, um, you know, you can continue to add um, more states to your policy. It changes your rate a little bit. It's not crazy. Um, and disability and in, uh, in workers' compensation insurance, like, is an expensive insurance. Like, you pay under $100 a month. And the thing we found out when we, when we started doing business in New York last year, we started hiring in New York. Um, and that person's actually moved out of the state. So I'm good to, glad to not have to do business in the state of New York anymore. As I said, we made this decision last year that we're, we're just not hiring there again. But we thought when we contacted our workers' compensation insurance that they added New York to our policy, we thought we were good. 60 days after we had already been paying state taxes, city taxes, had them on our working compensation policy, we get a letter from the state of New York telling us that we're getting fined and the fine amount was $7,500 for every 10 days that um, we were considered not compliant. So if you're looking at that about 60 days, right? Times $7,500, I'm sorry, so 60 divided by 10, right? So we're at six times $7,500. So that's $45,000 in, in fines we now had. So then I try to work it out with them because we've had, you know, different things come up about tax rates and things in other states. And usually what happens is the state lets you know there's a problem and they're totally willing to work with you and you figure things out. And if there's any back pay, you pay, you handle whatever's got to get paid. It's not a huge problem. We had to actually buy a state specific policy in the state of New York. The state of New York actually has their own um, pool that you can buy disability insurance for, uh, or, um, disability insurance from, and it's not even expensive. It's like very cheap. It's like 50 bucks for the whole year. So it's not a huge thing. But then while working that out, getting in the new paperwork, now we're another 30 days down the road. So our $45,000 in fines, cause now we're at 90 days. So nine times 7,500 
We're now at $67,000 in fines for one person working in the state of New York for a policy we thought was already in place. So then we work with the state of New York and they're like, oh, we'll do you a deal. You can just pay us $17,000 for these fines for this policy that you thought was good in 50 states. It turns out it wasn't good in our state and you had to go buy another new policy for $50, but you also owe us $17,000. And I was like, that's really suppressive, man. Like, why would I want to do business in a state that handles things like this? So we made the decision last year that we no longer hire in a state of New York. And a lot of in our HR documentation, we've said we don't hire in New York because as as an employer state, they're suppressive. I don't want to deal with that. Um, there's 49 other states that are in really good shape um, that that we currently employ in. But to me, they're not employer friendly. They don't operate in a, in a way that they're willing to work things out. And now seeing how they're handling a former president, that just goes to show that we made the right decision last year that we do not hire in the state of New York anymore. It's just not something we're doing. I think when you show people that you're not going to be friendly to business, you're going to have your state lose money so fast. You're going to have businesses leaving a state so fast allowing this to happen because this just shows people capitalism doesn't exist anymore. And that's a huge problem. So that was a decision we made last year and we paid off our $17,000 fine, which lucky enough was not a $67,000 fine for a $50 policy that we thought was good in 50 states. It turns out it wasn't good in the state of New York because they have their own pool of unemployment ins- or, or of disability insurance you have to buy. So once again, word of caution, do more research before you register in a new state so you know all these things. You know, wasn't something we knew. Um, and at the same time, do not hire in the state of New York if you're a business that hires virtually. Just not worth it. And they're showing us how they don't respect us, the American people. So if you guys have enjoyed this video, I know it was a quick one and it was a pop-up one. Like this video, leave a comment. I want to hear what you think. And smash the subscribe button if you support liberty, freedom, and want to build a better future. Have a good one, everybody.